Okay, hello everybody. And welcome to Yawata City in Kyoto Prefecture. And today we are here at Iwashimizu Hachimangu. We are here at the Keihan Station, the Keihan train line that runs between Kyoto and Osaka. And today we're going to be going up Otokoyama. We're going to be going up a mountain by cable car and we're going to be visiting this shrine here, this Iwashi Mizu Hachimangu. It's a very important shrine and uh, so we're going to go up the mountain, get some views and uh, explore uh, the shrine from the top. So let's go. Okay, so here we are. This is at the uh, the Keihan. This is the Cable Hachimangu Gucci Station. And it's right here next to the station. And we're going to take this uh, this cable car all the way up to the top. So, uh, I have my Ikoka card here in my wallet. There it is. Thank you. 
座新開発館に向かいまして左手開発扉開きます足から上のお客様は誕生日愛し開発に立ちの方でお願いいたします左側扉開きます Okay, so that was the cable car, cable car ride up to the top of Otokoyama, uh, the mountain here. And uh, there's a lot to see and do up here. And so uh, you can see we are here right now. And there's a suggested walking route, and it goes around. So anyway, uh, we're going to walk around a little bit, and uh, I'll see you soon. Okay, so welcome to the observation deck here at the top of uh, Otokoyama, the mountain. And uh, you, we have some really, really beautiful weather today. It's uh, late February, and I think it's around uh, 68 degrees Fahrenheit. which might be close to 20 degrees Celsius, I'm not really sure. But uh, this is the view here, and uh, very clear skies today. And if you saw my cycling video about uh, the green tea and the bridges, uh, that tower right there in the middle of the screen is uh, the tower that I went to the top and I was showing the three rivers and then how they come together. They uh, come together to form the Yoro River, the Yorogawa. And so this is uh, the exact same spot that I was uh, in that video. So here from this view, uh, this river here closest to us, this is the Kizu River. And uh, that's the river that I followed all the way down to uh, the, the bridge that floats away and where they had the green tea. So that's the Kizu River. And then uh, kind of in the center of the screen, it's hard to see is the Uji River and then on the other side of the uh, highway over there is the uh, Katsura River and then they all uh, converge down here to form the Yoro River that goes all the way down to Osaka Bay so this is kind of like a like a river plain I guess and um, very fertile land and just a lot of history a lot of trade and uh, culture uh, between Osaka and Kyoto and that's kind of the train line the Keihan uh, main line follows that historic uh, trading route today so we can see the uh, mountains in the distance so just a lot of it's a really beautiful day to be here And it looks like there's a, uh, a cafe up here. They've got some uh, picnic tables. So uh, you can just sit down, have a rest, and uh, enjoy the views. So yeah, very beautiful uh, observation deck, getting really nice views all the way up to uh, Kyoto City in that direction. Of course, we are in Yawata City. This is in Kyoto Prefecture, and we're quite close to the Osaka Prefectural boundary. We can see the Keihan train right there crossing, crossing the bridge. So, anyway, very beautiful bridge here. And now we're going to go on the uh, the walking path, and uh, it's supposed to lead lead us directly to. Uh, Iwashi Mizu Hachimangu. So that's kind of the 
the highlight of today's video and I uh, might see some other interesting things as well. Okay, so let's go check it out. Okay, so now we are uh, very close to the entrance of uh, Iwashimizu Hachimangu. And there's a lot of uh, things to see here in this area before we enter. And uh, right here, the first thing is uh, Seiho Den and the Aiho Kan. So uh, this building here is actually used for um, accommodation. So a lot of the, uh, the worshippers, uh, they will come here and stay the night. So this is kind of like a shukubo, like a lot of people enjoy when they do, uh, when they go to Mount Koya in Wakayama Prefecture. And so uh, you stay the night and uh, do the prayers, the chants in the morning around sunrise. And of course the diet, everything is vegetarian. So kind of like a Buddhist monk uh, diet. And so this place has a very strong connection with Kukai who uh, introduced Buddhism to Japan and especially the sh uh, Shugendo, which is the um, kind of mountain worship. And so of course we're here on top of this mountain, uh, Otokoyama. And uh, so it's all connected going back to Kukai and uh, his teachings. So uh, let's see, there are a few other things to see here. And I'm not sure if this is a cherry blossom tree. Looks like a very old tree with uh, support. And uh, right over there you can see the Japanese flag flying. They're trying to fly. Not much wind right now, but uh, yeah. Uh, so tomorrow is actually a national holiday in Japan. So you don't really see the uh, Japanese flag flying very much. But uh, for national holidays, it's common to see uh, the flag flying at uh, shrines like this or maybe uh, post offices and uh, fire departments and things like that. So there are a few other monuments here. I'm not really sure what they are, what they stand for. But uh, yeah. But the main one I want to show you is just over here. And I'm not sure if you can tell with the, with the glare coming back, but this is a monument to Thomas Edison. And why would there be a monument here in Yawata, Kyoto, about uh, Thomas Edison? But uh, yeah, as you know, he invented the light bulb. And uh, uh, his first light bulb used a lot of bamboo filaments that actually came here, uh, that came from here in Yawata. And so still today, the, uh, the people of Yawata have a kind of close connection to uh, Thomas Edison. So on the right hand side, it says to the memory of Thomas Alva Edison, 18, 1847 to 1931. And in the middle in Japanese, it says the uh, Edison uh, Memorial. And then on the left hand side, it's got his quote, genius is 1% inspiration and 99% perspiration. So uh, anyway, that's one of his famous quotes. So yeah, little connection to Thomas Edison here in Yawata in uh, Kyoto Prefecture. I even saw that there's a uh, Edison celebration. I don't know if they have a festival or some kind of special event celebrating Thomas Edison. So there you go. Japanese flag on a beautiful blue sky. And uh, they call that the uh, Hinomaru, which is the, uh, that red circle represents the sun. So in Japanese culture, the sun is red. So lots of different monuments here. Looks like we got some uh, ume, the uh, plum blossoms here. And then I'm not really sure what this is. It's a really big monument. I'm not sure what it stands for, but uh, there it is. 
And then here's the same Yawata city tourist information uh, I showed in my other video. But uh, this is it. This is the number one spot. Uh, the Iwashimizu Hachimangu Shrine is the number one place to visit here in uh, Yawata. There are some other shrines, temples, gardens. And then, of course, this is uh, the video that I made uh, about the uh, Nagare Bashi and the uh, Hama tea, so the green tea and the uh, the uh, the bridge. So anyway, you can see they've got a restaurant, a convenience store, some vending machines, toilets, and things like that. And then also over here, I noticed there's a parking lot. So if you have a car and you don't want to take the train or you don't want to take uh, the cable car, you can just drive up here and park. And it looks like free parking, maybe, which is uh, pretty rare. So anyway, it looks like the Otokoyama Karage, the fried chicken from this mountain, is maybe one of the specialties. They also have some uh, udon, udon noodles and uh, some amazake, some uh, sweet uh, drinks. And uh, yeah, they have uh, different types of ice cream, including uh, the green tea ice cream and Japanese sake flavored. So anyway, it's kind of a tourist attraction here. Uh, lots of things to do. And so uh, anyway, let's go into the shrine and uh, take a look. Okay, hello and welcome to the main sanctuary of Iwashi Iwashimizu Hachimangu Shrine. And um, before we go in, I'm just going to give you some uh, information. I did some research and tried to uh, learn a little bit about the history and the meaning of uh, this place. And so um, this is a pretty important temple or shrine. So. Uh, I want to minimize the amount of speaking that I do once we go in, but uh, this is some uh, background information uh, to kind of put everything into context as we go in and we walk around. So uh, first of all, this shrine uh, was established back in the year 859. So it's a very, very old shrine going back to the year 859. And uh, it was established by uh, Emperor Sewa. And he ordered the shrine to be built here because Hachiman wanted to be near Kyoto to watch over the city and uh, to watch over the uh, imperial family. So who is Hachiman? So that was uh, one of the things I really wanted to know before coming here. There are a lot of Hachiman shrines all over Japan. So uh, Hachiman is the divine spirit of the Emperor Onjin. So, of course, he's not alive today, but his spirit continues uh, as Hachimon. And uh, Hachimon is the god of archery and war. And uh, he's worshipped by both Buddhist and Shinto. And also, especially by farmers, fishermen, and samurai. So the farmers pray for a good harvest. The fishermen pray to catch a lot of fish. And then the samurai were praying for uh, the protection. Um, so again, the god of archery and war. So we'll probably see some uh, symbols connected to that very soon. And so especially because of the samurai, um, the Hachiman shrines have been spread out uh, nationwide. And uh, so anyway, Hachiman is considered the divine protector of Japan, Japanese people, and the imperial family. So that really, really shows you uh, just how important Hachiman is to uh, to the people of Japan, of course, the emperor, and tomorrow being the emperor's birthday, which is a national holiday. So uh, Hachiman is very, very important uh, all over Japan. Uh, so Emperor Sewa ordered the shrine to be built here. And then after that, there was a monk. His name was Gyokyo, and he had a vision of building uh, this shrine right here on the top of Otokoyama, this mountain. And so until 1868, that was before the Meiji uh, Restoration, but uh, this was both a temple and a shrine. But then at that time in 1868, the government wanted to separate Shinto and Buddhism. So uh, today it's a Shinto shrine, as we can see here with this Torii gate. And from 1871 to 1946, uh, this was called a Kanpei Taisha, uh, which would be kind of a ranking of the shrines. Uh, that are supported by the government, and that would be the highest ranking possible 
uh, to receive from the government. And then uh, many emperors have come here to visit as well. And so going back to the year 979, uh, Emperor Inyu and other emperors after him came and also Emperor Murakami came here. And then uh, I guess the last thing I want to say is uh, inside there is a national treasure and it's called a kris, K-R-I-S, which is kind of like a sword or dagger uh, from Indonesia, an Indonesian style dagger. And this is a national treasure. So uh, we're going to walk in. Uh, this sign here, it says uh, it's about a five minute walk uh, to the entrance and about a 20 minute walk down to the bus stop at the maybe the bottom of the mountain. So anyway, we can see here. Um, it's kind of a walking route here along Otokoyo. So again, as I said, this is a really uh, sacred place. And uh, try to do some talking a little bit, but not too much. So I'm not sure about this shrine, but uh, this is called Omote Sando, which is kind of like the main entrance going into the shrine. And uh, typically humans are not supposed to walk in the center. I can see that lady ahead of me is kind of in the center. But uh, that would be for the gods to come and go. So the humans should walk on the right or the left. Of course, lots of stone lanterns. You can hear the wind really picking up. You see the moon? There. Beautiful blue sky. So actually, uh, once we go inside the shrine, uh, I'm not going to go all the way up to the main altar. I will film from a distance. And uh, I'm not going to do very much talking once I get inside. Here it's uh, some of the uh, sake barrels that the local distilleries uh, use as offering to the gods. Looks like a lot of local sake from Kyoto and Yawata. So right over here is where you purify your hands. Yes. They even have some English information here. You can see it says National Treasure. So yeah, to be honest, I'm actually quite surprised. There's a lot of English information available. There's an English website for this shrine. And a lot of the signs have uh, English.
So you can see there's a line of people waiting to go up and pay their respects. So uh, we're not going to go up there. But uh, this sign over here says it's a national treasure. So it sounds like they're having a special ceremony on the inside. We can hear some drums, some bells. So again, uh, not to disturb, kind of stay respectful. So we're just going to walk around uh, the back side of the shrine and see some of the uh, smaller shrines. So here we can see uh, a national important cultural property. There are a lot of signs like that uh, showing maybe the original. The original uh, fence barrier. And then here, uh, it's kind of like a, a band people wear around their neck. Maybe they're pilgrims. I saw some people wearing those earlier. You can see some of the monks sweeping and cleaning up the area.
So there it is, the uh, the main altar, Iwashimizu. Yeah, you can see the drum right there in the corner. Of course, uh, traditional Japanese drums are called taiko, taiko drums. Maybe here they have performances. It looks like a stage, a performance area. And there is a festival here. I think it's, uh, let me check. I think it's in September. It would be on September 15th. There's a uh, Iwashimizu festival every year on September uh, 15th. So here we can see some of the arrows. Again, the god of archery and war. It's just a really beautiful day to be here. So there it is. That is the main approach to the shrine. Okay, so that's a little tour of the main shrine area. And uh, if I see something else that's interesting, I'll be sure to film it. See you soon, bye. Okay, so I uh, just wanna do a little uh, give you a little information about these uh, these uh, statues here. You see these a lot in, uh, in shrines. And uh, so I did some research about it and uh, usually they're in shrines, but we can also find them in temples as well. So um, yeah, they're used in both, but oftentimes we can see them here in, uh, in shrines, Shinto shrines. So here, uh, as you can imagine, they're kind of like guardians, and they keep out the bad spirits and keep the good spirits in. And uh, these are called koma inu, or kind of lion dogs, I guess. Uh, so uh, anyway, you can see this one here on the right has its mouth open, and this one over here has its mouth closed. And so this is called the, uh, with the mouth open, this is called agyo, agyo in Japanese. And then with the mouth closed, this is called ungyo, ungyo. And so it's kind of open mouth and closed mouth, I guess would be an English translation. But together you have the a ah and un, you put it together, that'd be aum. And aum is a very sacred syllable uh, that is used in Hinduism and Buddhism together. That sound is a very sacred. Maybe you have seen the symbol of Hinduism. Looks like a three shape, but uh, that is the Sanskrit symbol for uh, Aum. And so A is the first letter of the Sanskrit alphabet, and Un is the last uh, letter of the Sanskrit alphabet. So together they make the word or the sound Aum. So anyway, that's a little information about that. That's what these are called. These are Koma Inu, and one has the open mouth, one has the closed mouth. And again, the first letter and the last letter of the alphabet, it kind of represents, um, how do you say, like a, a s kind of like a continuation from the beginning to the end, like the cycle of repeating, I guess, or completion. And so uh, that's the meaning and the symbolism uh, that goes into these uh, koma inu, these uh, lion dogs here. So anyway, I hope that clarifies and uh, maybe answers a lot of questions about the meanings of these statues. Okay, see you soon. Okay, so uh, as I mentioned, this mountain is really sacred, and uh, of course the easy way to get up to the top is by cable car, but there are also many, many paths, uh, and they're very well uh, marked off, and uh, there are many different smaller shrines along the way as you go up or down the mountain. So here we can see a bamboo grove, and uh, just a lot of beautiful mountain nature. 
and then this is what it looks like the uh, the path as it goes down so it as you go down according to the map uh, you can turn right or left and go different directions and they have smaller temples and other sacred places along the way so uh, anyway it's just a really nice peaceful area and uh, so I think I'm gonna go back like this and skip the cable car and I will uh, just walk back to the train station and return by train so anyway I'm gonna keep walking down this trail and uh, I think there's something pretty important further down the mountain so when I get there I'll let you know see ya okay so I was just about to say this place is extremely peaceful but right before I hit record you can hear some noise in the distance I don't know what they're doing construction work or something but anyway this place really is peaceful there's nobody around in sight and uh, this is just the walking path along the mountain here and then I came across this and uh, this is what it's called here the Iwashimizusha so this is actually a, a well here this is a I'm not sure if this is it but uh, right up here This is a sacred well. And you can see the big ladle there. And there's the water. And this place is sacred because the water never dries up in the summer. And it never freezes over in the winter. So you can get good, pure, clean water all year round. So anyway, this is a sacred well here on the side of the mountain. So anyway, I'm going to keep walking along this path. And uh, again, I think there's something pretty important coming up pretty soon. So uh, when I get there, I'll let you know. Okay, see you. Okay, so I'm continuing my walk uh, down the mountain. And you can see uh, it's very well paved. Or uh, There's no way to get lost, I guess. But uh, anyway, uh, just really in the middle of pure nature here. Just forests, very well preserved, and lots of bamboo groves. And uh, it looks like they even have a light here. So if you happen to come at night or you're running out of daylight, it looks like it would be lit up at night. But uh, yeah, you can see here how it goes down and then it curves back and then it curves back again. So, uh, anyway, and they have lots of benches. Every few, uh, about every five minutes or so, they've got some benches for uh, people to sit and take a rest. So, I'm definitely glad I did it the way I did. Actually, you can see a bench right there straight ahead. But I'm very glad I did it the way I did. Take the cable car up, walk around, see it from the top, and then uh, it's much easier going down. And... Uh, kind of take in all the smaller shrines and sacred places as you go back down the, the mountain. So anyway, like I said, it's just very peaceful. You can see the city, that's Yawata. Uh, it's a very beautiful day, but lots of houses just right outside the mountain. Um, that's over close to the train station. But anyway, this is a very pleasant uh, walk. And uh, yeah, I think it'd be doable going up or going down, but uh, I think for me, I'm glad to take the cable car. And that's part of the fun of getting here. It's just taking the cable car and riding that as well. So uh, anyway, I'm going to continue my walk down. You can see another bench right here. And uh, yeah, and as the path continues down, down there. So anyway, I'll see you soon. Okay, so I made it down to the bottom of Otokoyama, 
or Mount Otoko. Boys Mountain maybe. But uh, anyway, we are now leaving the mountain. We're leaving the shrine. And uh, we're just going to finish this walk together. And so here, of course, as you can see, is a big twitty gate. And uh, this is the second one. So we're leaving the shrine. So the first uh, twitty gate will be the very last one that we see. But uh, this is where the path starts. Uh, I came down the path right there just to the left. But uh, if you want to go the long route, uh, you can go straight. And that's a little bit longer. So uh, anyway. So we're going to walk around here. This is a, a really important place uh, here at the foot of the mountain. And again, this is where I came from. And uh, it's uh, protected by the government. It's a wildlife area. And uh, I saw signs with uh, the different types of birds. So it's probably a good place for bird watching. Just a very pure, natural area. So you can see we're coming back into civilization here. Cars coming by. There's a parking lot here. So it's a little brick road here. Looks like a historic area. And here's a bridge. And this bridge is called Ango Bashi. Ango Bridge. So there it is. And I'm not sure what this, uh, this little stream is. But yeah, it looks like a historic neighborhood. Uh, some old houses over there. So yeah, pretty nice area. So again, they got the uh, Japanese flag out today. Tomorrow being a uh, national holiday, the emperor's birthday. So we got a new emperor here in Japan. Uh, this is the third year. And on the Japanese calendar, the year would be Reiwa, the Reiwa era. So this would be uh, Reiwa Sanen, the third year of the Reiwa era. So actually this area up here This is called the uh, Kodasha Kodasha And uh, this enshrines the garden the deity of uh, Yawata city So uh, Kind of the guardians of this area and uh, Yawata City here. And again, here's the Koma Inu. This one with its mouth closed. And this one with its mouth open. Okay, so this place that we're entering is called the Tongu Den. And it's the site of the festival that I mentioned every September 15th. 
that festival was held right here. I wonder if we can get a view. Yes, we can. Okay, so uh, it's a little hard to see, but in the back, you see it's a stone pagoda. It's a little hard to see, it's cut off, but it's one of the biggest stone pagodas in Japan. So I'm not sure why they have this gate closed. But uh, yeah, very large area. So I'm sure this place is really, really busy on uh, September 15th. And there must be a, a meaning to September 15th. I don't know why September 15th. Looks like this is called a tsutsui, which is a uh, sacred well. Looks like a uh, small Japanese garden with a pond. It's really bright, the sun. It's really bright right now. You see some ducks. And then, uh, as I mentioned before, that was the second torii gate at the beginning of this section. And here it is. This is the first uh, torii gate entering uh, the shrine here. So let's take a look. It's got some uh, interesting things. So here, this is the tablet on the first torii, and uh, we can see the shrine's name, uh, and it's displayed here on the gate, so there it is. Uh, Hachimangu, right there. Hachimangu. And then maybe this is it. There's the mountain. Otokoyama, Mount Otoko. So there it is, that's the first gate going in. And of course you can see some uh, information over here. Uh, about the festival, the mountain, and the shrine. So yeah, lots of maps. It's hard to get lost. Uh, just follow the trails, go up and down the mountain, take the train, take the cable car, and uh, you should be able to get around okay. And the final thing I want to show you is um, Yawata Hashiri Mochi, which should be just right here. This is a Japanese sweets shop. So if you're interested in trying some Japanese sweets, this would be a good place to come. Yeah, you can see it's getting a lot of attention. Very special place. So here it is. So, Iwa Shimizu Hachimangu, right here in Yawata City, in Kyoto Prefecture. You can see the sign.
Okay, so there it is. There's your tour of uh, uh, Yawata City and Kyoto Prefecture. It is the... Um, uh, <laughs> I always get confused with the name. It's uh, Iwa Shimizu Hachimangu and a uh, very important shrine. As you can see, there's a lot of history going back more than a thousand years. Um, and then, of course, the connection with Thomas Edison. And you can take the cable car to the top and uh, enjoy some beautiful nature and some sacred places. So uh, you can really do a lot right here in a small area. So uh, I think maybe an afternoon would be good enough. It doesn't take a whole day to see this. Uh, just a few hours. And uh, yeah, and of course you can go to the observation deck and get a beautiful view of the three rivers forming the Yoro River, seeing all the way up to Kyoto City and down toward uh, Osaka Bay. So anyway, I hope this video was interesting for you. hope you learned a little bit. And uh, yeah, see you next time. Bye-bye.